What we want to do in this video is introduce you to uh, timber connections. And generically we'll do this with bolted connections in these first couple slides. Then we'll jump into some uh, nailed connections. That is a connection that is uh, made of nails. And um, we'll actually do a, a calculation or two using a, a table that I'll give you. And um, then we'll end with uh, just a quick generic conversation about uh, mechanical connections that exist. Uh, most of what we're going through comes from the NDS. It's the National Design Specification for uh, Timber and, and how to design with that. Um, in most cases, uh, you're, you're just going to follow what's uh, included in the specifications for what you're uh, given. Um, we, we don't... Uh, want to spend a lot of time going through this so I'll just uh, roughly reference it for you and give you an idea of some of the, the major concepts that we need to think about. Um, when we're talking about bolted connection design concern number one is the net cross-section in the member and uh, if you're going to drill a hole in a member uh, for instance this one on the left of the left figure right there um, you've taken the cross-sectional area and you've reduced it by the diameter of the hole. If you take the same cross-sectional area, you've reduced uh, it by the diameter of, of the two different holes that are there. And what you're left with is something smaller on your cross-sectional diameter. If you take away some of the material, what does that do to your stress? It's going to uh, increase the stress value, which uh, May, may cause it to actually fracture across there. And uh, the diagram on the right um, shows you how this, uh, you know, it, it could break straight through or it could actually jump. It's going to take the path of least resistance either way. And um, typically you assume that the hole is about 1 16th inch larger than the actual bolt size that you'll be using. Um, if we've got a load that is acting, uh, you know, this one's pulling downward here, which means that one's pushing up right there, you've actually got some bearing that's occurring on the, the bolt here. And what that does is it causes crushing of the timber um, material, the timber fibers um, above or below that, that uh, connection there. And so we've got to be concerned about crushing that can occur here. Uh, another thing besides crushing, is that you can actually cause um, a, a bearing failure of the bolt itself. And so I'm showing this particular diagram where the, the bolt is actually starting to rotate and bend uh, downward due to the, the bearing load that is pushing down on the bolt there. If we have um, multiple members here, then we're actually spreading the load out over a, a larger cross-sectional area. Um, for, for these ones right here, uh, let's look at the left diagram first. We refer to this as single shear situation. I've got two wood pieces here. Um, in this one, we've got a, a load. The lower members going to the right, the uh, upper members uh, being pulled to the left. And what that does is it wants to fracture the bolt, I'll draw it with a, a squiggly line there to represent the, the fracture plane there, but it wants to fracture the line at the single interface between the, the two pieces of wood. So we call that a single shear situation. Uh, the capacity is, of the bolt is strictly carried by the cross-sectional area at um, the, the interface there. If I've got three particular members there, note that it actually can spread the load over two different interface sections there. And so we refer to that as a double shear scenario where uh, the shear force is being spread over uh, twice um, the cross-sectional area now. Um, of course, you could have more members than this, but these are the two common cases here. And uh, we, we have to think about um, the different scenarios. We'll, we'll do more double shear and single shear another day, but for now, just uh, recognize which one is which and how many areas it's um, spread, spread over. In this particular uh, design consideration, how close the hole is to um, the edge of the member will uh, determine how easily it can rip out. And so 
Uh, there's there's some specific uh, minimum bolt and minimum edge spacing guidelines given in the NDS. The again, that's the National Design Specification, and you just need to to follow those. For the sake of this class, uh, we won't actually look those up, but you do know where they are and, and where to find them. Um, I do want to spend a little bit of time with with nailed joints. Um, design consideration number one is the actual size of the nail itself. Um, typically they're referred to as a certain number of, of certain number of penny nails. Um, a, a four penny nail, um, they would refer to that as 4D nails. And uh, the penny sizes uh, refers to the price it was for 100 nails. So uh, the larger the nail, the higher the cost. And so way, way back when, when they used to use this actual penny weight um, of four penny nails, uh, you could get um, 100 nails for, for four pennies, I, I believe is the, the way that is referred to. So um, the load direction actually matters as well. Um, in this particular case right here, if we've got a lateral load, that would actually want to, f to shear through the nail. But the other thing that can happen is if the nail isn't uh, penetrating deep enough into uh, the adjacent member, then as this load acts to the left, the nail could actually rip out. Uh, we, we would call that withdrawal or pull out. And so um, part of the capacity has to do with determining what that pull out capacity is or what the shear capacity is. And they're, they're both considered. Uh, the third one also has to do with uh, penetration. And this simply, uh, the, the way to think about this is simply um, ensuring that the nail head is flush with um, the, the member that we're driving into, which means that we would have um, the full amount of penetration in the uh, adjacent member. And if, if that is true, then the capacity charts will hold, hold true. All right, design consideration number four, um, the heavier the wood is, um, me meaning the species and or the grade of the material, um, generally the harder and the, the tougher the wood is, the greater will be the load resistance ca capability. Um, of you know that, that nail's driven in something that's, that's dense and uh, it holds the nail uh, better than if it's a soft wood and wants to pull out better. A couple other concerns, just like with bolts, uh, the closer you get to the edge, um, you end up with some problems. This one represents a, a bunch of different problems here. This one's too close to the edge. These particular nails are too close together and you'll, you'll split out the fibers and they'll want to in between them and they'll want to come out. This one's simply too large for the piece of wood. Number one, it's poking out the other side and, and it's not uh, penetrating fully. This one's got too little penetration. Of course, uh, that would pull out fairly easily. And uh, you get too many nails, too close to the edge, um, too, too closely spaced together, and uh, you, you just split out the wood grains and uh, your, your, your nail capacity for that particular joint goes away. You don't have any. So this is uh, the design table that we're going to use. Um, this, this particular one is on Learning Suite. It's the fourth table in those supplemental tables that we refer to in other videos. Um, there's two different parts to the table. There's an upper part and a lower part. The upper part um, is for a uh, structural side panel members that typically have to do with uh, sheeting materials. So a 3 8 inch material, a 15 30 seconds inch material, or a 23 30 seconds inch uh, sheet material. And, and this is the piece that you're driving the nail um, th through initially. Um, and uh, we, we just want to make sure that the back piece that uh, the nail goes into second um, has sufficient depth to have full embedment of the nail. Part two is the part that I like to, to deal with more. This has to do with sawn lumber side members. Um, the, there's two, two categories here. There's the three quarter inch and the inch and a half. So if I'm dealing with a two by four member right here, well, the inch and a half refers to the width 
uh, the the actual dimensions of the two part of it. Um, we we typically run it so that uh, the the longer uh, dimension is flat against the piece that we're driving into, and you're driving the nail through the shorter dimension. Um, but but this one would represent like a one by four or something like that, um, where it's only a three quarter inch um, thickness that's that's there. The next thing we need to know is um, I usually refer to it as the penny weight, but let's say that we're um, we're nailing a two by four to a four by eight something like that. Well, we know that we're going to use the the two by whoops. We know we're going to use the two by four category. And um, if I told you we are using 10 penny nails, then we would know that the load capacity per each of those nails is 118 pounds. They refer to this as the load per nail Z. Um, it makes this assumption that we've got adequate penetration, that we've driven the nail perfectly perpendicular, and that the load is coming lateral. So th those are the, the assumptions that we make, again, given those dimensions. And um, that particular size of nail, each nail carries 118 pounds. All right, let's go through a couple of examples. You'll have to be able to do this on your homework. And uh, you would also uh, want to be able to do this for a test. So, how many nails are necessary to attach a 3 8 inch side panel to a 4 by 8 and adequately support a load of 500 pounds? So, first thing that we're doing here is uh, we know that we're dealing with the 3 8 inch side panel category. So, we've got uh, these different load capacities circled in red out to the right. And um, the, the next thing we need to do is then we, we know that if we've got a load of 500 pounds, if we're using six penny nails that can hold 48 uh, pounds per nail, then I need 10.4 nails. Um, I want you to think really quickly. If I've got a, a 3 8 inch side panel trying to nail to a 4 by 8, you're trying to cram 11 nails in there, uh, it's going to get pretty tight. So maybe, maybe we want to consider a, a slightly larger nail. Um, if I've got eight penny nails, then the load can increase to 63 pounds per nail. So 500 divided by 63 pounds. Now I'm now I'm down to 7.9 nails. By the way, um, always round up. If you round down, you're actually decreasing the capacity. So uh, in this case, 10.4 uh, went up to 11. 7.9 nails also goes up to eight. And finally, let's check the other one. Um, if I use 10 penny nails they can handle 76 pounds each. Uh, I need to carry 500 pounds and so I know I need 6.6 .6 nails. Uh, round that up and uh, we end up with seven particular nails for this this uh, connection here. Um, that th That's how you run these design problems. They're not too terribly complicated. It's simply a matter of um, knowing this is, this is working the problem backwards and figure out how many nails you need. You could also uh, work it the other way if you knew you had eight nails in a connection and they were a certain size you just grab the value how much load per nail and, and multiply it by the number of nails and you'd get your actual capacity so you can work it either way and i think i've got two two homework problems for each one all right the final thing that we want to talk about here is is uh, oftentimes with timber we end up with uh, these mechanical connections why why would we use these types of connections well, in essence, um, the connection itself, when, when performed properly, becomes stronger than the timber material and uh, make, makes a, a strong connection. Um, in each of these cases right here, you'll notice that uh, these, these uh, Simpson strong tie type uh, connections have slots for holes. And what you want to do is follow the manufacturer's recommendation for both the size of the nails and the number of nails. So follow the nailing specifications uh, for each of these types of connections. Uh, same sort of scenario here. If we're talking about uh, nailing um, a, a timber stud wall down to a concrete uh, foundation right here, oftentimes they'll leave a bolt out and again we would want to follow the actual connection um, and bolting specifications um, in the plans so that we would ensure that we're getting the full capacity um, that was required. So um, not so much interested in you knowing what um, the actual specifications are 
um, with this conversation, but more so just a reminder that you need to ensure that whatever the specifications call out, that you do follow that. Because if you don't, you'll end up with a, uh, well, assuming that you go uh, with an inadequate connection, you end up with a capacity that is less than what the designer had called out, and you may end up with trouble um, with your, your structure later on, either in a windstorm or an earthquake or, or simply under the, the normal loads that the, the building may encounter. 